Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. 261 passengers have died, 1,000 injured in a three-way train crash in India. India members of parliament have traveled and confirmed it is anti-Christian violence in Manipur. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. As Prime Minister Modi visits from India to America, in fact, making speeches in Congress, we are sad to report there has been a horrific train crash a couple weeks ago in India. BBC reports there are at least 261 souls have perished and maybe another thousand have died in a horrific three-way train crash in, of all places, Odisha, India. That's a state in the Northeast where I have been many times and our ministry sponsors and feeds up to a thousand orphans and children in the same state where the train crash happened. BBC says that 261 are dead, 1,000 injured. Uh, one passenger train derailed onto an adjacent track and then it was struck by an incoming train, also hitting a nearby stationary freight train. The massive recovery operation was underway at the time of this report, and hundreds of emergency workers searched through the wreckage to find, sadly, many bodies and injured people. But the cause of India's worst train crash in over 20 years is really not yet clear. Officials say that several carriages from the Coromandel Express, traveling between Calcutta and Chennai, derailed at about 7 p.m. in the Balashore district. Again, I've been to Balashore district. Uh, after hitting a stationary goods train, several of its coaches, the back end cars, ended up on the opposite track, and then in comes another high moving train traveling in the opposite direction. It was the Howrah Superfast Express train from Yeshvampur to Howrah, and it hit the overturned carriages, sending its passengers flying. Atu Karwal, the chief of the National Disaster Response Force, told ANI News Agency the following, quote, the force with which the trains collided has resulted in several coaches being crushed and mangled. And those are the coaches where many of the passengers were resting. More than 200 ambulances showed up in response. Hundreds of doctors and nurses and rescue personnel were sent to the scene. And the state's chief secretary, Pradeep Jaina, was talking about this. Another person, the Director General of Odisha Fire Services is Sudanshu Sarangi, and he had earlier said that 288 people had died, but that number was scaled back to 261. All trapped and injured passengers have now been rescued, thankfully. It's not clear, however, how many are still facing serious injuries and how many of those are still in the hospitals today. Work to restore the site on the crash has begun and the trains must keep moving. India's Southeastern Railway Company said the Saturday after the crash. That's the news, our thanks to BBC. And we suffer with the people of India who are involved in this train crash. Uh, we love you and we care deeply about your safety and about the loss of your loved ones. Uh, we weep with you, we mourn with you, uh, and, and we pray for the quick recovery of those who are still injured and recovering and, and uh, all I can say, and people sometimes ask Christians, where is your God? 
And I tell you, our God is the one who brings comfort. Our God is the one who inspires the hospital drivers and the doctors to go and bring healing. And our God will help wipe away your tears and bring you comfort, even in the midst of your sorrow. We believe this accident is from the devil, not from God. The, the, the death and pain and suffering are from evil. They're not from God, God is always good. And God promises this in Revelation 21. If you are saved, if you know Jesus, and if you go to heaven, then God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Someday in the Christian heaven, there shall be no more death, no sorrow, no, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Let us pray for you. Would you allow us to pray? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name for the people of India and especially those impacted by the accident in Odisha. Father, we pray for their healing, for their recovery, and that you would wipe away their tears from the mourning and sadness caused by this uh, train derailment. Father, we pray that you reward the first responders, the doctors and the ambulance drivers and everybody who was able to help. Father, uh, give them a prophet's reward for being your hands and your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna discuss the horrific anti-Christian violence in Manipur, now confirmed by members of parliament. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. We're here in Israel, in literally the scene of all of the holy sites, like the Via Dolorosa, where Jesus carried his cross, the garden tomb where he was raised from the dead, the Sea of Galilee, where he taught the disciples. And I prayed, Lord, how can I bring this inspiring environment into your living room? And what we've produced is a four DVD disc set with the entire Gospel of Matthew. I teach every verse in all 28 chapters of Matthew in short 12 minute segments. So you can understand the exact words that Jesus taught from the exact location where Jesus lived. Pick up the phone right now and call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D for a suggested donation of just $50. We'll give you all four discs, the entire Gospel of Matthew, or you can write to us at the address on your screen or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You're gonna love this Bible teaching. Pick up the phone and call us today. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting, and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car, you can watch the video on your smartphone, visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms, visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. As Prime Minister Modi, the, the Chief Minister of India, is visiting America this week and making speeches in the Congress, we want to again confirm the horrific reports of anti-Christian violence that are still happening in Manipur, India. It's one of the easternmost states, and I've been there uh, and I've shared you know, teaching in some of their colleges as a visiting professor. And I'm very concerned about the anti-Christian violence that is continuing to spread. We recently interviewed John Podiati on our show and he confirmed 35,000 Christians have been driven out of their homes, particularly in the Meite or, or Kuki tribe that there's an ongoing battle between those. But it's not just between the, the factioning tribes. In fact, that's a sideshow. It's actually Hindus persecuting Christians because 202 churches have been burned or arsoned and 
Hundreds of bodies, mostly Christian, are piled up in the morgue where Hindus are shooting them in the streets. And we have this confirmed from multiple sources. Now the latest source is members of India's parliament. Indian Currents is a newspaper that interviewed recently a member of parliament from Kerala. He's a Christian in the South. But Dean Kuriakos is a member of parliament that traveled all the way to the other side of the country secretly. Or, or at least not, un, not with government permission. As a member of parliament, he said, I don't need anybody's permission. The constitution gives every citizen the right to travel to every part of India, and so I'm just gonna go. And so he went with another minister of parliament, and here is his interview after seeing it. He was asked these questions. What prompted you to travel to India, to Manipur? Dean Kuriakos, member of parliament, replied. It was nearly 40 days since the outbreak of violence in the state of Manipur on May 3rd. There was no end to the violence. Even after Home Minister Amit Shah went to Manipur, stayed there for three days, and talked to all of the stakeholders. So we wanted to see the ground situation and know why the violence was not ending. The reporter asked the MP, was it a secret visit? He replied carefully, Dean Kuriakos says, it is wrong to describe the visit as secret because the Indian constitution grants permission to every citizen to visit every part of the country. True, we did not inform the state government because it is not mandatory to give such information. We did not want the help of the state machinery to travel to Manipur. Also, we feared that the government might put roadblocks before us. He was asked, where did you go? The MP replied, we visited Imphal, the capital of Manipur. I've been there myself. And from there we went to adjoining districts and saw dozens of relief camps where people in thousands have been living in miserable conditions for more than a month. The relief camps are run in government buildings, schools, etc. They are given food materials, which they themselves cook. Other than that, they do not get any support. For instance, those who need medical care cannot get medicines or medical help. The reporter asked him, is it true that this is an ethnic clash between the majority Meite tribe and the minority Kukis tribe? The MP responded, it is difficult to believe this is a tribal clash. On the contrary, there are instead clear indications that it is an anti-Christian pogrom. In other words, a purge of Christians. More than 200 churches have been destroyed. Churches, including those belonging to the majority Meite tribe in Imphal, have also been destroyed. So Meite Hindus are attacking Meite Christians but it is politically convenient to call it an ethnic cleansing or tribal clash. But the fact is, it is aimed at destroying, if not eliminating, the Christian community in the state. Let there be no mistake about it. We visited St. Paul's Church, where every inch of the structure had been destroyed. They systematically used gas cylinders to destroy churches and homes of Christians. The MP was asked, why is the violence not ending? He replied, that is what has been worrying us. When we were there, the St. Joseph School was attacked. The attackers came at night, violating the curfew orders. The law and order authorities were pre present, but they could not prevent the attack. What this implies is that the writ of the state does not run in Manipur. There is reason to believe that the arsonists have the support of the state government. We're gonna take a short break, but there is more to say about this report. Dean Kariakos, the MP from Kerala, let's take a moment and pray. Father in heaven, we pray now for an immediate end to the violence, and immediately repentance on the part of not just the violent 
factions, but on the part of the government of Manipur that they are to blame. And they are enabling this. And they have done nothing to stop. In fact, they have helped sometimes. The radical Hindu tribes kill the Christians and burn their churches because they get more votes for doing that. But we say no. In Jesus' name, this violence will stop. We speak to the demons inside of those people and we say, you will sit down and you will cease your violence in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a short break. More on this report from Dean Kariakos of Kerala. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from my pillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with a nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. I mean, this is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. What a concept. I really love the towels. They're really great. They're super absorbent. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know we're having the biggest clearance sale ever. Get our six piece towel sets for only $29.88 with your promo code. My towel sets are made with proprietary technology and include two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get our six piece towel sets. Originally $99.98, then on sale for $49.98. Now we're closing them out for only $29.88 while supplies last. Once they're gone, they're gone, so please order now. You're still looking good. I'm still feeling good. You know, I've got all your MyPillow products. Mattress topper, bed sheets, MyPillows, towels, slippers, blankets, sleepwear, dog Whoa, bed. whoa, Charles. Everyone now can get MyPillow products at huge discounts at MyPillow.com. That's right, now's the time to go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to take advantage of our three-in-one sale. We're bringing you exciting new products, overstock specials, and closeout deals you won't find anywhere else. For example, when you buy one of our brand new MyPillow 2.0s, you get another one absolutely free. And with our overstock sale, you save 50% on our luxurious Giza Dream bed sheets. That's as low as $29.99 for the best sheets ever. And with our biggest closeout special, you get our all season slippers for only $35 or our sandals and slides for just $25. Quantities are limited and once they're gone, they're gone. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. We're continuing now our report. It is coming to us directly from India Currents Magazine who has interviewed a member of parliament from Kerala who traveled to Manipur. And Dean Kariakos reports, anti-Christian violence. It's not a tribal clash between the Metes and the Kukis because the Mete Hindus are attacking the Mete Christians and all the Kuki Christians. In the minority state in the hill country, they are being pogromed. 35,000 driven out of their homes. 200 plus churches destroyed, hundreds of dead Christians in the morgue, and the state of India is doing nothing about this? The state of Manipur is helping this? The interview continues with Dean Kariakos, the MP who saw it firsthand, and they asked him, do you suggest that the state should be brought under president's rule? <clears throat> he replied, the president's rule should have been introduced weeks ago. Now the president of India is different than the prime minister Modi of India who's in America, but sometimes the president of India, although it's largely a ceremonial role, has some authority to replace people. Dean Kariako says, we met some other MLAs, those are like a, a, a state representative or a state senator in, in the state of Manipur, belonging to the BJP as the Hindu party. They themselves were saying that they must have lost their confidence in the Byron Singh government. So Manipur is a classic case of what would happen if the state government supported a large group of anti-social elements fed constantly on hatred, religious hatred for a community. The marauding groups, the rioters, have weapons 
They've looted from police establishments. It is difficult to believe that this happened without the knowledge of the political leadership in the state. That the house of the only woman minister was burnt to the ground, this tells a story of its own. Even senior civil and police officers are suspicious of their own security guards. The police have all been defanged, or the ministers, if they are Christians, have been disarmed. What's more is required to infer that law and order has totally collapsed. MP Dean Kyriakos was asked after his visit to Manipur, do you think a separate state for cookies is justified? He replied, I'm not in a position to suggest that because I do not know how the Christians remaining in the valley would feel about it. However, there is no doubt that a majority of the cookies have been alienated. Those are the mostly Christian hill tribers. They feel that the hills where they live should be declared a separate state, or at least an autonomous region as was in the case of Ladakh. This needs to be studied. So there's precedent for creating, if not a separate state, at least an autonomous region where the Christians control their own police force or the election thereof. The MP was asked, what do you propose to do now? He said, we will write to the president of India. Drupadi Murmu is the first tribal to become president. And this is what is happening to the tribal community in Manipur? She has a moral and constitutional obligation to intervene. We will also write to the prime minister, Narendra Modi, who has been silent on this issue. We will also try to meet with him to order to give a first-hand account of our visit. Of course, we will also inform the Congress leadership about the condition in Manipur. He was asked, do you think Home Minister Amit Shah and his visit to Manipur has yielded any results? He answered, on the contrary. Many churches and church establishments were destroyed after his visit. It is now 40 days since the internet was cut. The official death toll has already crossed the 100 mark. Nearly 10,000 houses have been destroyed. Tens of thousands of people have been come, come homeless. Thousands of children are being deprived of education. They fear that the strategy is to eliminate them. Mr. Shaw admitted that this is not an ethnic clash, but a violent campaign against the Christian community. Let him admit this and take accordingly the right steps. What steps do you suggest? They asked the MP from Kerala. The state should be immediately under the president's rule. The army should be deployed to the state, and anyone who takes the law into his own hands should be dealt with severely. Once the message goes out that no nonsense would be tolerated, violence will automatically end. The Indian state has the capacity to deal with the situation if it feels strongly about it. That is the news, our thanks to Indian Currents for that report. Wow, uh, Dean Kariakos, Minister of Parliament, sir, we discern upon you the spirit of Almighty God. You were a prophet. You were speaking truth to power, to the president, to the prime minister, and so far they have had deaf ears, but we pray that you will be vindicated. Jesus promised you this in Mark 9. These things Jesus says, I have spoken to you that in me, Jesus Christ, you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I, Jesus, have overcome the world. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Do you need a physical or spiritual healing? Are you being tested or tried? When Jesus needed to pray, he went to the garden of Gethsemane. Do you need to really connect with God? If you're visiting Colorado Springs, come see the Gateway Prayer Garden just south of the city along Interstate 25. Walk our prayer trails among the trees by the beautiful Fountain Creek. Stand at the foot of our large cross and connect with Jesus. Enter our life-size replica of the empty tomb and spend time reading key Bible verses etched in stone 
along our ground cross as big as a football field. Join our worship gatherings and plan to attend our annual Easter Sunrise Worship Service. We're located off I-25, exit 132A at 8035 Bandley Road, just north of the KOA campground. Experience Jesus at gatewayprayergarden.org. That's gatewayprayergarden.org. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, Jesus taught the parable about sowing the seed and you don't want it wasted. You want it to grow with 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you three mission areas that we're doing here at Pray in Jesus Name. I think our charity does more with less than any other charity I know. We are fertile seed. For example, number one, we pray in millions of television homes every day or every weekend on eight networks. We have 2.5 billion home TV impressions every month. The second area, we feed orphans and children in some of the poorest slums overseas. We're building a new vocational school, we're digging wells, and we're serving the poor when you give to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, we defend religious freedom, especially for our troops and our chaplains. We've now helped send five million petitions to Congress. We've helped change bad laws or policies in 13 states and four times in federal law. You know my story as a former Navy chaplain, standing up for the right to pray in Jesus' name and defending religious freedom. Would you donate today? In fact, we want you to come up monthly pledge sponsor. When you visit PrayInJesusName.org, on the right side, click the monthly pledge sponsor button at PrayInJesusName.org. Your monthly gift will help change the world in Jesus' name. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Would you sponsor our ministry in especially the Northeast parts of India? We have already sent $10,000 to Manipur for the, the relief efforts being led by our friend John Podiati and Bibles for the World. We care deeply about any victim of violence, but especially when they are Christians and they are killed for Jesus. These are martyrs that you are sowing into when you donate through PrayInJesusName.org and their families. The Bible says in Malachi 3, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. There might be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. May God reward you as you give. If you can give right now by telephone, Call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.